<laughs> Welcome to week six of our series on David. And we're really talking about David, who was a man after God's own heart. And really there was a sense of David pursued God. Yep. Uh, it wasn't about the things that he did, but it was, what, it was who he pursued more than what he dude. Yeah, that's true. Do you know what I mean? That's true. I'm yeah, paraphrasing. I've, I've heard it said better. Look back at some of the other episodes. But the, the reality is that who he was pursuing is more important than what he, what was, he was doing. doing yeah. and that was the line that I wanted to start with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got to get the, the tense is so important. All right. The, um, and um, the episode we want to talk about in David's life today starts with a really intriguing episode. Um, and it starts like this. It says, at the time, that's the time of year, right? Yeah. At the time Spring. when kings normally go to war. Now, there's a reason you go to war in the springtime. It's not as cold, right? <laughs> also, you have, to, to you, have to go to, you have to push the enemies back then yeah. so that they, they're not going to take your harvest yeah. later in the year, right? Yeah. So you have to get strength, right? So at the time when the kings go to war, it says David sent Joab. That's one of his generals. Yeah. Joab sent, David sent Joab out with the armies and he stayed home. Yeah. So first mistake. Yeah, well... Because kings were supposed to go. Generals would have gone with him. It's a really but clever Jobs, little Jobs, sentence, It's almost right? like Job's knocking on the door. Hey, David! Time to go. It's spring. Let's go. Yeah. Right? And he's like, oh, yep, yep. Uh, you Almost like, you go on ahead. I'll catch you uh, up. Yeah, yeah. It's like... And then oh, he said it in that verse, but David stayed home. Yeah. He didn't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's three... Yeah, so the, the sense right from the start is that there's... You got to keep right. doing. You got to keep doing the right thing. You got to keep pursuing. We've talked about David pursuing God. Yeah, man after God's own heart, right? It's pursuing. And last time we talked about doing. how he extended the kingdom yep. and that created peace and prosperity yep. for God's so blessing to be poured out. So David was a legend. He was doing everything well. Things were going well. They were conquering. But yet, at a time when kings go to war, David stayed home, and that was really the beginning of probably what we're talking about in week six is David's failure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a really confronting story because David is a hero and he's still a yep. hero, yep. right? But when we read this story and other parts of his life where he made, he made some pretty tragic errors, right? And this one yep. begins, this story begins with David stays home. And then it says he got up one afternoon after a midday rest. After a midday nap, yeah. Like right? he's, he's comfortable, eh? Yeah, he's comfortable, yeah. right? So he's, remember this guy was a shepherd boy, then a fugitive, he's a giant slayer, but... Warrior, yeah. Ah, now he's 40, right? Yeah. Oh. Got a few kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few he's grays. pretty good, quite a bit of money. Yeah, he's got right? some wealth. He's had some success. Yeah, he's got yeah. some things behind him. You know, we say Nothing this... Nothing to prove anymore. Yeah, we've got... I've got this church thing down. I understand salvation. I know the Jesus yeah. stuff, yeah. you know. I'm a I don't really like work. the fast songs. Yeah. You know, oh, we don't need to get to church every week. It's that attitude, right? Yeah. And I'm not talking about those specific behaviors, right? Yeah. But that attitude that it's falls mindset, back yeah. into, I'm not going out to war and I'm not just not going out to war. I'm yeah. going to have a midday rest. Yeah. So this is what the army are doing. <laughs> the army are fighting a war, yeah. right? Miles from home, camped out in the wilderness. Yeah. And what's David doing? He's having he's a little, na- little nap. He's having a right? little He's having a little nap, right? And he says, come, from his midday nap, he comes out, he's up on the roof of his palace, yeah. and he's looking out at the, over the neighbor's fence, right? And he just happens to see? see something. He just happens to see someone having a bath, right? He sees the next door neighbor's wife. It's a big city, right? <laughs> he, sees, he sees a woman bathing, yeah. right? And so he's distracted, right? Yeah. So he's not, A, he's, he's resting back in comfort, and then his, he's distracted by the things he say, sees. Yeah. Right? That's how it starts. Yeah. He's, not, he's not pursuing. He's not moving forward anymore. So stop pursuing God. Stop pursuing. And then he's distracted by what he sees. Yeah. Right? And then things escalate from there. Yeah. And I think, the, I don't know how many of my friends, you know, we, we talk to people all the time. You know, we've got, you know, once you've got, you know, once you're our age, you know, in your 40s, um, You've got your own stories, yeah. and they start like yeah. I got distracted, yeah. and then once you're distracted, yeah. it escalates, and yeah. once it's escalating, yeah. it's very hard to put the brakes on. Yeah. You know, you, you start maybe you tell lies right at work, or you or you you just moral little moral twist here, or you you start looking at stuff on the internet, and it escalates, right? And if you look at the story, this story it escalates crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Starts off with David having a nap and then seeing someone naked, yeah. right? He ends up um, sending for Bathsheba. He's the king, right? He yeah. sends for her, yeah. right? He sleeps with her. Yeah. She becomes pregnant. And then he has to go into this elaborate plot. Right? Well, then he's got, to, he's got to get deeper into the lie. Yeah, yeah. He has to try I've and now he has to cover this up. thing and I've got to cover up. And so he sends, he sends the husband. Yeah, Uriah. Yep. Uriah to go on the battlefield. 
And it says the job. What does he say, the job? Oh, put him on the put him, <laughs> put him on the front, on the front line. line. Put him where the most heat is because I, almost like hopefully he's going to die. And then then everyone else pull back, but don't tell him. And then I mean, it's just yeah, it's a horrible story. Yeah, it's, it's like how low have we become here? Have we have we have, yeah. we, have we arrived? And it's a tough story to think about because we're talking about a hero, a Bible hero. Yeah. Like legitimate hero, but it's real. This is when people we're talking about the greatest king of Israel. When people talk about the Bible being all made up, religious, you know, trying to control people, right? They would leave these bits out. They if, would. If the Bible was all made you up, you would never write a hero story like this. No, you'd leave this bit out because this is not heroic. This is David. It's cowardly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is David resting back at home. He wants to sleep with the neighbor's wife. Sleeps with the neighbor's wife, and then ultimately conspires to have the neighbor murdered so that he can take his wife. Right. Yeah. And that's it. That's the end of the story, really. So the, Stops there, and then it, no, and literally, nobody finds out. Yeah. No one finds out that he slept with her beforehand, and no one finds out that this plot about yeah. David. It's all secret. That's it. And I think that's often you know the challenges. All of us have got stuff in our life that's gone wrong. Most of us not like this, right? But we've got stuff where we know we're not living up to God's plan. Absolutely. But the lid's on it. Yeah. No yeah. one else knows. Yeah. Right, and it could be real minor things. You know, God said to do X, and yeah. you just haven't done it. You just haven't done. You know, it. Yeah. God's telling you that you need to spend more time in the Word, but you're not doing it. No one else knows, but you know, and the lids on it, right? And I love the thought that the safest, you know, it's often said the safest place for King David was to be on the battlefield. That's yeah. what he was supposed to be doing. Yeah. That's where his 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 victories came from. That's what he should have continued to do. Is continue to pursue the enemies of God, really, and to go after the things of the kingdom. And because he didn't do it and he rested and he got comfortable, you know, and there's so much, there's so much parallel to this age now yeah, of yeah. comfort, isn't there? Yeah. That we can just get comfortable because life's complex now. There's things and there's kids in the mix and there's all these other things and complications and bills we've got to pay like we've yeah. talked about the last few series. Things come up and it's like, and someone mentioned the other day in a testimony that I heard, which I thought was great, is that, is that us sort of, us not, say, attending church or falling away from God is not always an act of rebellion, it's often just the complacency yeah. that we slip into. Yeah. Right. And I think Life we need to take that seriously, gotta, yeah? yeah? We do. Yeah, because it's not like, it, it really matters if we get distracted, right? It can really escalate. You think, oh, I wouldn't yeah. do that. No, you wouldn't do what David did because you're not David, right? But you'll do what you do. Yeah. You'll fail how you yeah. fail. Right, yeah. and maybe you don't fail as spectacular as David, right? But we also don't kill Goliath like David. We're yeah. not a spectacular people, yeah. right? Yeah. Our failures are different. Yeah. Our successes are different. But the the principle is that the safest place is moving forward. Yeah. How are we yeah. pursuing God? And then, then the next most important question, that, which we probably want to focus on for the rest of the time, is yeah. what David did when he was confronted. Right. So this is the prophet. This is the prophet Nathan. You got to read the story. You have to read the story. It's Nathan, so good. Nathan talks of the situation where there's this baby lamb and da 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 da, and this horror situation. And the king says, "I've got all these other lambs, but I'm going to use your lamb to sacrifice from the poor guy." Yeah. Right. Which is basically the, the guy's pet lamb. And then Nathan says to the guy, well, "What would you do to a person in that situation?" Oh, and and, and, and David completely spits the dummy. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. You know, totally. we'd kill him. We'd do yeah. all this, and I'd and I'd repay him. I think fourfold. Yeah. For what he lost, and then Nathan says these famous words: "Hey, you, you are, are that man." Yeah. And so Nathan is confronting King David, which is still going to be pretty scary because he's still King David. Yeah, yeah. But he's yeah. confronting the him. Most like, what the heck out. were you thinking? The most likely outcome for, for Nathan would be to be put to death, death. for challenging yeah, the yeah. king, right? And no one knew, but, Na- but, but Nathan, God spoke to God Nathan. God the prophet, yeah. Yeah, and I think that the prophets in the Old Testament are really the type of the Holy Spirit. Right? So God's not likely to expose your sin in but front this of is, everybody this else. This should be this little voice in our ear that we Spirit know comes this is not right. Yeah. And starts to reveal stuff. Yeah. That's why it's important to worship God because it creates space for the Holy Spirit. That's why having a quiet time in the morning or a, a short reflection in the evening where you just think, hey God, where am I at? And allow God to speak to you. Because often God will challenge us. And yeah. the Holy Spirit's the best person to challenge us yeah. because because we should be assured of God's love. Yeah. Right. But when when we're challenged, when we realize our sin, yeah. the challenge is, is what do we do next? And if you look at David, he, he, wrote, he wrote that psalm, you know, the most amazing psalm, you know. So he, he wrote, um, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, yeah. and renew yeah, a right spirit. spirit in me. Cast me not away from your presence, Lord. Right? And it's amazing what happened yeah. when David was confronted with his sin, which was grievous. He repented. Yeah. So he, when he was confronted with his sin, right. do you know what he did? Yeah. He went, pursued God. Pursued I God need again. your spirit. I need you, God. It's almost like I've come away from the very thing that I always used to do that kept me safe and I'm going back. Mm. And that's why, you know, we talk about this, we've talked about this phrase before, this umbilicus mundi, the sense that 
bringing things back to the centre. That was just a bit of Latin for you. Umbilicus, umbilicus mundi. So from Latin. Yeah. Um, but it was a sense of the umbilical cord. It was this is where he got sustained from. This was his life. God yep. is always his life source. That's what he gave. God gave him everything. Yeah. And he's now going. Oh my gosh! I've come so far away from my life source, the thing that gave me, the person that gave me strength. Yeah. The God that put me here. Yeah. Totally. You know, and he comes away from that. But also. And I think good thing to discuss even in your e-groups is around that one is the one John one seven. Yeah, bring things into the light as Christ Jesus is in the light. Yeah, you know, God can deal with things in the light. Yeah. So even for this discussion, and again, we pray that you've got someone in your world that you feel comfortable talking to about these things because when things are in the light, God can deal with it. The mm-hmm. devil wants to keep things in the dark and keep things hidden away. Yeah. And be thankful for people like Nathan's in the world that are yeah. able to speak to you about the challenging things in life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and again, I think. Yeah, don't, and don't miss the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, You know, the Holy Spirit will speak to you about the things Absolutely. in your life that are contrary to God's plan because He's committed to the plan, right? Yeah. God yeah. is committed to His plan and He's also keen to have you involved in it, right? And there's aspects of your life right now, I can tell you this without knowing you, there's aspects of your life right now that don't measure up to God's plan, yeah. right? Yeah. I know that about me, right? I actually know that about Jake. I know that about everyone, right? But it, but we trust in the Holy Spirit in the process we've yeah. talked about before that when, we, when we're confronted with our weakness, don't, we don't hide it. We don't pretend. We don't cover it up. We say, yeah, that's me, Holy Spirit. I need you to work in my world. And we get, we get maybe um, Christian friends to stand with us. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone else who ne- maybe needs to know about it. Maybe they need to stand with you so you can move forward in it. Because yeah. the reason David became king so young was because God replaced Saul. Right. Yeah. God took away from Saul his rulership, right? He said, no, you're not king anymore. Yeah. I'm giving it to someone who's after my own heart. Yeah, great. Yeah. Right? And that's the key thing is that God would take away from us our authority or it yeah. gets taken from yeah. us if we don't repent in those moments of weakness. Him, yeah. It's not a question of whether you'll fail. Yeah. That's not a question. You will fail, right? You'll fail from time to time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The question is, how are you going to respond in those moments of failure? Will you pick yourself up and reconnect with that pursuit Great. and the purposes yeah. of God? Because you can yeah. pick yourself up. You yeah. can reconnect. Yeah. You can pursue. Um, but it's going to come down to you making a choice. Yeah. And allowing the Holy Spirit to give you that motivation yeah. to do so. It's a great question to finish off week six. How do you respond when you fail? Because we will fail. We'll yep. all fail. How do you respond when you fail? Great thing to discuss at the end of week six. We've got one more week to go for week seven. So keep tuned for next week. We'll see you then.